has helped us through the downturn. He was great with his expertise. And we haven't had him on the show in a while. And we said, you know what? Let's get him back on to talk. Scott Colbert, Commerce Trust Company's chief economist. Scott, welcome back to the show. Thanks, McGraw. You story and you equate investing to major league baseball explain oh i think that uh you know around mid year I mean, what is going on with, with the markets? Because we're still, uh, unemployment's tremendous. Markets are sort of leveled off a little bit. So where are we? Well, that's, uh, that's, that, that really is the $64,000 question. Um, we think at the bank that this is likely to be the longest economic cycle uh, that the country will ever have between recessions, the longest having been 10 years bordered by the first Iraq war and the Internet bubble. Um, and so we're nine years into this. Uh, we really see the, the economy as being exceptionally healthy and likely to last for uh, a number of years yet, which is really an out-of-consensus thought, but that still doesn't mean you don't have to get prepared for the downturn. You've mentioned you haven't had me on for a while. Right. That's probably because things have been <laughs> awfully good. Yeah. Oh, when you come around, you're the grim reaper. It's not good news. <laughs> I, I remember doing a piece for the bank in 2009, right, when the market was oh, just yeah. collapsing. Yes. Uh, I, I was reading somewhere recently, uh, Scott Colbert, who was the uh, chief economist for Commerce Bank's trust company. Uh, they were saying that um, the markets would not be as well off, except for the fact for the tax cuts and a a lot of these companies are buying back their stock. Yeah, you've got to. Um, uh, 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 there are a lot of Trump critics, of course, but one of the positive things he's done, at least for the stock market, has been the tax reduction, um, uh, reducing the corporate tax rate from 35 percent to 21 percent. That's probably boosted the overall S&P 500 earnings by at least 8 percent. And if nothing else, all things the same, you know, that puts an 8 percent premium on stocks. And of course, uh, you know, post the election. Uh, the S&P 500 is up almost uh, 35, 40 percent. Is that artificially inflated, though, because of this? And will it last? Well, you know, to the extent that you believe those tax cuts will last, and there isn't anything that, that grandfathers the corporate tax cut, you would think that'd be a permanent increase in the earnings power. Now, not all of the earnings will accrue to the companies. They'll have to, via competition, give some back to the people that buy their goods and services. But the vast majority of it so far has fallen right to the bottom line. Right. What about um, R&D? What about new research? What about buying other companies? Sure. You know, I mean, a, a typical company does three things with their earnings. Um, they pay a dividend, um, they reinvest back in their company, and they buy back their stock. Um, this uh, newfound wealth, so to speak, with the reduction in the, in the corporate uh, tax rate um, has forced them to consider, you know, what do they do with the extra money? And the easiest thing to do is probably buy back your stock. Uh, but the second, you know, thing that folks are doing is they're really looking at, um, you know, uh, uh, mergers and acquisitions and trying to figure out a way to, you know, use this money to grow. Um, and then finally, you know, it, it had happened right away, too. I thought it would be more like a trickle-down kind of process. But, you know, a number of places were giving bonuses and increased salaries, you know, right. to their employees. So some of it even managed to work its way into the average consumer's pocket. Yeah. What do you uh, make? Uh, well, one of the biggest complaints we hear from businesses is that there are not enough humans not of people, not of qualified applicants. What yeah. is that doing to business? Well, clearly, um, you know, with the uh, unemployment rate having peaked <clears throat> during the recession at 10%, it's down to 4% as measured by the, uh, the, the way the government does it. We've touched 3.8%, which is almost a, a perpetual low. Um, the number one complaint we hear from businesses and middle market companies that we deal with is a lack of qualified employees. Um, that has yet to translate into large wage gains, right. but this is one thing the Federal Reserve is concerned about because they know that uh, eventually lower unemployment does lead to higher wage gains, increases in wages and salaries generally then 
increase inflation. And, of course, this is why they're taking some of that punch bowl away and raising short-term interest rates. Right. But it, it, and it's not – if you're a business and you're hiring people, you're hiring people because you can make more money. I pay you $10. I'm going to make $20 off of you. So in a sense, is the lack of human capital and the lack of jobs hurting business? Well, uh Certainly, in the long run, you know, your um, uh, economy and your overall GDP is a function of the number of bodies you have to throw at the problem. And uh, this is one reason why we'd like to see population growth. It's uh, one reason why Japan's so stagnant, because they actually have negative population growth. And then uh, the, the weakest uh, growth in Europe is in Italy, where they literally have no population growth either. Uh, Scott Colbert with us, uh, uh, Commerce Trust Company Chief Economist. Uh, tariffs. What are oh, your thoughts on tariffs? Sure. Well, you know, there's, an, there's probably uh, not a, a, a trained economist in the country that, that likes tariffs because they're largely just taxes. You don't know where the taxes will accrue to, but they, uh, they accrue to the consumers, they accrue to businesses, and they just slow things down in general. With that said, y you know, this country does run a large trade deficit with two folks. We run one with the world and we run one with China. Um, we run about a uh, uh, $600 billion trade deficit which represents 3% of GDP, which is kind of hard to understand, but basically we import about 18% of our goods and services and we export about 15. Half of that trade deficit, or more than half of that trade deficit, is with China. And I think the administration is really focused really on that, much less so with the relative, you know, modest trade deficit we run with the rest of the world. Why is a trade <laughs> deficit bad? It's, it's hard to say that it's, it's bad. Um, uh, George Will makes this great joke about he has a trade deficit with his barber, and he constantly pays his barber $20 every month for a haircut, and right. the barber never, ever once asks him to write a column. <laughs> so so th there's, it's, it's, it's difficult to say that a trade deficit really is bad in a sense. Um, you, uh, businesses and consumers are only acting in their own individual best interests by buying the goods and services that they find the cheapest and the best that they can afford. And in, in aggregate, we know that trade has, has helped the overall economy. So um, I think, you know, the administration, of course, wants to point to fair trade, but it's hard to say what is fair yeah. and what is unfair trade. We, uh, we don't have enough time. We could do a whole hour with you. Um, but overall, with the rising interest rates, you're saying that's taking away the punch bowl, um, but that's sort of the normal business cycle. Is this if and when we ever have this next recession, is it going to be a normal recession? Is it going to be something worse? And the deficit, yes. because it's going through the roof. Right. Um, so, you know, you've got your, trend, uh, your, your twin deficits, uh, both the trade deficit and, of course, our fiscal deficit, the budget deficit, uh, where essentially the government takes in about 19 percent of revenue and spends about 23 percent of GDP. So we're running almost a 4 percent um, uh, budget deficit. Uh, the budget deficit will eventually catch up with us. Uh, the total government deficit is nearly one times GDP, which means we borrowed f forward, you know, an entire year's worth of growth. Um, but it's not a near-term problem. It's a, it's a longer-term problem. Um, the real question near-term is how long will this recovery last? We think that it's probably got at least another three or four more years, um, number one, because the banking system is in such great shape. Um, number two, uh, they've been slow to take this punch bowl away. You'd have to say historically a 2% short-term Fed funds rate or a short-term borrowing rate is an exceptionally low rate because it's about their inflation target. Right. And that's about as low as they used to go. They just had to go really low this last time to pull us out of the last financial crisis. So monetary policy is still fairly um, uh, has, has, has still fairly benign. Right. And the third thing is the recovery has been so shallow and so slow to get going, and it's really only now um, taking foot, if you will, and accelerating from its 2% pace to something closer to 3 um, Because of that, inflation's been slow, and the Fed can be exceptionally uh, uh, modest in, this, in, this, in their tapping of the brake. He's so smart, I only knew about half of what he said, but I followed him as long as he could. Uh, we got a web seminar for you tomorrow. I got uh, 10 seconds. Tell us about it. Uh, we do have a web uh, a video at uh, 1030 a.m. Uh, East or middle, uh, the, the middle of the country time, and uh, Commerce Bank is sponsoring it. And you can find that on our website and probably yours as well. CommerceBank.com. Also, this uh, article about um, readjusting your por portfolio midseason. Right. Scott Colbert, Commerce Trust Company Chief Economist. I blew off traffic. That's